Please bless our time together, and may our desire be to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. And then we have announcements and coming events. So, oh, maybe we have something that I see on that. Um, the adult class meeting Sunday at 9.30 in the fellowship hall. And then we have the yada yada prayer group for first and third Thursday at 1 p.m. Well, we will not have it this Thursday. Next one will be July 1st. We're going to skip this one. Yes. Okay. And the prayer result, second and fourth Wednesday at 2 p.m. And then the new adventure is going to be the Kids Club. Fun time for kids in kindergarten, fourth grade. Here we wait just a second. Pause. Matt, you ready? Please. I recruited a kid to help me out. All right, we have a very, very short skit for you because Pastor Greg really likes kids and asks us to do it. Okay. I'm bored. I wish the pool was open this afternoon. Well, I'm going to Kids Club today. Do you want to come with me? What's Kids Club? You haven't heard of Kids Club? It is going to be so much fun. We get to have snacks and read books and do crafts and play games. Where is it at? It's at the United Methodist Church in the Fellowship Hall, and it's every Monday starting next Monday for the rest of the summer at 3 o'clock. So, what do you think? Do you want to come? Cool, I'll come. Great! Invite all of your friends and we'll see you there. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so starting on June 21st and for um, six Mondays, we're going to have Kids Club over in the Fellowship Hall. Like Doug said, it's going to be for kids who are going into kindergarten through fourth grade this coming school year. And um, we'll have a snack and a story and a Bible verse and then a craft and a game. And so we're asking for help with volunteers each week and also people to provide snacks for the kids. So I have sign-up sheets and they will be out um, in the foyer area after church. There's going to be one for snacks and then another one for volunteers. And we encourage you to sign up for more than one time. We need to make sure we have plenty of helpers to um, make this work for the kids. So we are not having Bible school this summer, but this is kind of um, in place of it. Hopefully it'll be a little easier to manage um, since it's just an hour and a half each week. So um, make sure to sign up. You can bring some drinks or snacks or you can come help out if you want to sign up to read there's a book each week so there's a special line for readers and then there's also one just for volunteers to help manage the crafts and games and things like that so if you have any questions you can talk to me or um, the people on the SPRC committee this is kind of our mission outreach program for the summer oh and if you sign up please, please put your phone number that way I can contact people if needed. We're going to plan for about 30 kids for the first time just to make sure we have enough supplies because we really have no idea and then after that we can adjust our numbers. So if your phone number is on there I can let you know how many to plan for if you sign up for a later week. Okay. Krista, if you might explain they don't have to plan the craft or the... Right. The you do not have to plan anything. Just show up at 2.45 and help. I'm going to plan everything. Sounds like a good opportunity for us to get to the fall with the children. Are there any more announcements and company events anybody needs to share? Well, and 
that case, does uh, stand for all for worship. The Lord is my strength and my shield. century or more ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, but we were saying, I don't think we were saying happy anniversary last week to them, did we? Hello? How many remember it last week? Okay, so we don't really care what you think. <laughs> You're the only one that remembers. 
so we're going to say happy anniversary, but Satchel's birthday is this week, and he's going to be 28. No, how old? Oh, ten. how many remember when you were 10? None of our So, okay, Chrissy, you should be a lady to remember that. Okay. Really? I don't care. Happy. Happy birthday and happy anniversary. Anybody else have a birthday or anniversary this coming week or last week? Yes? Our daughter turned 21 yesterday. 21? Okay, so here, I've got the words. Krista gave me the words. Marty, I'm sorry you don't have them yet. But uh, I'll share them with you by next week, okay? So uh, we're going to say happy birthday anniversary like that, that fast. So we have a birthday anniversary to you. Got it? Uh, can we do it? Look at somebody in the face and say, you can do it. Okay, we're going to try it. Okay. I hope we can. You ready? Help with my throat. Happy birthday. Concern, uh, your mom called Ron, and you're probably going to share that, right? Yes. You want to share it now, please? Yes. Uh, my brother Rick is scheduled for uh, surgery on Tuesday at the Swedish Hospital, and uh, it's a serious surgery. I'd like to ask for prayers for his uh, uh, surgery and successful surgery. All right. And uh, Dorothy's on her way, going to be on her way soon today. Uh, to go up and be with them. So uh, please pray for her and the team up there. Any other joys or concerns? Let me announce this first one before you. Oh, go ahead, Tilda. Uh, my sister, Sean, is passing away tonight. Uh, she's uh, in lockdown, so she's a little better place. I don't know what's going on. Uh, and I didn't hear who that was till then. With my sister, uh, Shawnee. I'm sorry. Well, I want you to know that this is a supported church, so if there's anything we can do uh, to help you, let us know, or the family. Okay? Um, also, uh, two buttes, I got this from, in a, a text, from Donna Wood in two buttes, and she said that our father, son, mother, daughter banquets are gonna be combined this year. And it's going to be at the park there in two views on the 20th, which is next Sunday, Father's Day, at 5 o'clock. And all you have to bring is a chair. So you're invited to a father, son, mother, daughter time together. Okay? And all you have to bring is a chair. Uh, any other announcements? I, I, joys or concerns? <coughs> Linda. Okay. Oh. Okay, I am Linda Gibson, of course, president of the UMW, and we just want to thank everybody who supported us yesterday. We did very well. Um, we have a few items back here that didn't sell, and they're available for donation, or if you're just hungry and you want to take one, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but it was a good time. We appreciate the support of all of the church uh, family and thank you so much for supporting us. So thank you. Yes, it was good. Yes, ma'am. I want to call Linda in. We were sitting there at lunch and I can't remember who it was, but said how great it was to get together. 
it's worse. It was hard to <laughs> Really, when you're just so, I think you were blessed because it was the first time in a year and a half that we were able to get stuff. Good. All right. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Glenna. I am so glad to be back here. I was gone for probably seven or eight weeks, and it's time to come home now. Thank you. We're glad you're back. <laughs> yes, ma'am. tell you that this little lady is the Miss Model for the Mellon Captain that was last night in her church. And she looks so pretty today. And Pollyanna would say gorgeous. Just gorgeous. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other joys or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Greg, we need to keep Leslie and Spencer Stewart in our prayers and the Gale families that with the loss of their mother. And speaking of which, they're going to have a memorial for her in July. And we'll put that in the bulletin the closer we get. Uh, I think it's on the uh, 16th or 17th uh, of July. And that'll be here. So uh, thank you, though, for reminding me. Any other joys or concerns? Lots of, lots to be praying about, right? We really want to impact on the kids here this summer um, in special ways. So uh, please keep that kids club in your in your prayers, okay? And uh, all the others in the bulletin. There's tons of them. And uh, Masterson's going to be home before Satchel gets to be 22 or three, right? He'll be back. Sometimes. Oh, okay. I won't keep saying that. I'm sorry. <laughs> any other any other things? Okay, let's have a moment of silent prayer and then uh, I'll pray and we'll pray the family prayer together. Father, we're glad that you know our ins and our outs, you know our beginning and ending, and you know all the in-between times. Thank you that uh, we can walk with you today in faith and know that uh, you've got a plan. And uh, for each person here, Lord, please bless them, and may we grow in our faith and be like you want us to be pleasing in your sight. We thank you for hope that uh, when we breathe our last here, when uh, we have a relationship with you, that uh, we're going to keep breathing spiritual breath and live with you and see you and be like you face to face. And uh, we lift up uh, children's sisters, family, immediate family, and others, Lord, please be the comforter to them and uh, please help them during this time. For the Gale family, too, for Leslie and others that uh, have been impacted by Madeline Jean's death. We, we thank you for the hope that we have in Jesus, that uh, you're prepared a place for us, and that uh, because of that, you're going to come someday and, and welcome us and call our name, and that uh, can bring us joy and hope in, in, in this life. And so please do that for this family and those that, uh, that knew her. Thanks for victories that you did, for touching Rick, and still being with Roxanne and helping to work as she travels, and uh, being the healer that uh, by your stripes we're healed. Your word declares that. For others that need your healing, Lord, that uh, can just believe that and, and trust you for that, that they'll walk in, uh, in hope today and, and this week as well. Thank you for uh, keeping your hand on Marcy as she has therapy this week and uh, giving her extra strength and Terry as well. Thanks to the families around and supportive and blessing to, to uh, the Swansons. Thank you for their time together, 50 plus years. And uh, 
for Satchel too, Lord, as he celebrates his birthday this week. And may, may you just continue to bless him and give him insight beyond his years. Thanks for all the folks that uh, are in the bulletin that we keep lifting up. Uh, Roxanne and Joanne Gerber, uh, the Ravens and uh, Mastersons and others, Lord, that uh, without you it's hopeless, but with you we just have joy unspeakable and, and full of glory. And uh, thanks for the victories that you provide. Please help our readers to make good decisions this week for President uh, Biden and Vice President Harris as they uh, do the stuff of governing, that uh, they'll do it well, that they'll have good counsel, and uh, that uh, it'll bring you a pleasure in uh, what we're doing. Please forgive us as Americans uh, of falling away and not uh, waiting on you and not trusting you and, and doing our own thing. Please uh, have mercy on us as a country and as individuals. And, Thank you, Lord, that uh, you can turn us around to do what's pleasing in your sight. And for our church, to the Methodist Church and others, that uh, will stay the course and uh, be pleasing to you and bring people into the kingdom and love you with all of our heart and serve you and do justly. And uh, so thanks for the victory that you give. And uh, for this time that we have to pray, we trust you for answering our prayers and supplying every need and working out your divine plan in Jesus' name, who taught us these words of faith when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I didn't have it written down in front of me, so I didn't pray it, but I hope you will be praying it. I only notice that we need moisture again. Uh, so let's keep praying daily uh, that God will supply, okay? And let's just see Him, him working in, in people like us. And now's the time for us to uh, share our gifts and our tithes and our offerings. So we'll wait on you as our ushers come. If you've been blessed, uh, give. And if you haven't yet, uh, be planning to give. Lord, thanks for these offerings that we are about to receive. Please use them in us for your purpose and your glory. May uh, these monies go to uh, not only meet the needs of this church, but uh, that we can be a, a witness in the community and around the world. Thank you for this privilege you give us. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. Please be seated. Young people, come on up. Miss Dottie has something to share with you. <laughs> It sounds like Bartholomew, but I don't think that's it. But that's a big old name, isn't it? Anyway, this man, he was blind and he couldn't see. And he was sitting on the road and he was a baker. And Jesus came along and he knew that Jesus was very special and that he could heal him. And he was very brave because he called out and said, Jesus, help me, help me. And there were a lot of people that were around that said, oh, be quiet, be quiet. He's not gonna listen to you. But he wasn't quiet. And he then, he kept saying, Jesus, help me. Please come and help me. And so Jesus, you know what he did? He went over there and he said, come, come near him. And he came near him and he said, be healed. And he was. He could see. And first of all, that's what we need to remember. That when we have something that's really troubling our hearts or something that is just as gone wrong, that we must never forget to call out to Jesus and keep asking and asking for his help. Because in this world that we live in, we have a hard time sometimes because we do need help. Sometimes we have parents that aren't being real nice to us, although they're probably being a pretty good disciplinarian and, and want to help us. But still in all, it's hard. And I think that if we call out to Jesus and ask him to help, I think he will. He'll help us to have a good attitude about things. And he'll help us to know how to love our friends. So, I think that this summer that's coming up, we should ask Jesus to be with us and help us at our swimming lessons and our when we go to play in the park and when we play with our friends, that we know that he's there with us and he's going to help us. So can we bow our heads and we'll say a prayer, okay? Dear God, we ask that you be with us every day, that you go with us, and if we need help, that you will come and help us, and that we'll be brave enough to ask for that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, we can go to the local church. together with a large crowd, leaving the city, a blind man, man Bartholomew, which means son of Phineas, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, 
Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shall go no more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called to the blind man, Cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you. He immediately received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, please be seated. Thanks, God. Can't remember if I told you about Alan Andrus. Did I ever tell you about Aunt Alan Andrus, who was a uh, back in Ohio for Buckeyes? Uh, why do they say that every time? Marty, you need to pray for me. Um, Alan Andrus was um, in his 20s in sports and all that in his 20s and uh, became diabetic and he lost his sight. And when we met Alan, he was in his 40s, and I would like to get his driver, and uh, actually he might have been mid-40s, because we were about the same age. And one of my jobs with Alan was picking him up regularly, because he dressed really well. And uh, he, we'd go to a mint shop in uh, that part of Ohio, and uh, we had this little clue uh, a number system, one to ten, and it was based on how good looking the girls in the shop were, that I would say eight, or, and I always thought after the fact, I should have just said two, and see how he would react, but uh, so we had this little little thing that um, it, was a, it was fun on my part, and I think he enjoyed it as well. But um, he was blind, and it was something uh, that, you know, church at the church where we attended, often we would have, he would come up and, you know, we'd have prayer for him, or people would be praying. But uh, you know what? He never, on the, in this life, received his full sight again. But uh, he died uh, probably a year or two after we left, or sometime after we left. And uh, he got his vision uh, better than 2020. Because when he was in heaven, I just can imagine he saw everything clearly again. Well, in the story that we have for today, uh, we'll call him Bart. Uh, because uh, Timaeus was his dad, and Bar means son. But we'll call him Bart. Uh, Bart uh, lost his sight. He could have been, we don't know when, how old he was. But um, fortunately, he heard that Jesus was passing by. He heard that Jesus was coming, and uh, you heard the result that he got his healing. But yesterday I was thinking uh, about the yard sale. There were about four or five in the area. How many went to all of them? Okay. How many ladies hung around here? Uh, yeah, and uh, did some shopping. By the way, Susan, please thank Bill, okay? Because the sluice, I understand. Uh, that we donated, Marty donated for me. <laughs> uh, uh, if he's getting it, right? Good. And whoever wanted my Montana guitar, thank you for not getting it. Marty brought it home. <laughs> uh, we'll see if we can arm wrestle again, and I think I can take her next time. That that won't happen. But I thought of uh, what do we do with our rummage sale stuff? Usually, it's usually something that we probably haven't used for, like my guitar for 30 or 40 or however many years, right? And so we want to give it to, to be used by somebody, and hopefully there'll be some money that comes to the women's group in this case, and goes to missions and uh, outreach. And then I thought uh, about that guitar that I really didn't need, and that sluice that I really didn't need. And you know, some of the shoes that I saw on the table, uh, Gene and I came over and we did a little shopping, and Gene didn't buy any shoes, did he? No. Gene, and he didn't buy any shirts, any clothes, but he did buy some pastry. Uh, he bought a share cherry pie and some other goodies, and uh, so did we, bought some things. But I thought, 
uh, what's some stuff in our spiritual life that we don't need? What are some things that keep us from growing? Perhaps we could give up a few minutes of watching TV or checking out our smartphones or computer and pray for somebody. I give you a list. Uh, Rick is one, and uh, Tilden's family is another, and you know the bulletin has some folks that we could pray about during the day instead of just spending all the time being busy on stuff. Uh, maybe it's learning uh, for the kids during the kids club. We're going to learn a Bible verse every week. Uh, it could be learning uh, even as an old person. I'm going to be challenged myself that I'm hopefully going to learn them so that I can know what they're saying. When they, when they quote that Bible verse. Or maybe we could give a little more time each day and share something positive with someone. Maybe you're already doing that. Uh, but just something, you know, a little note to somebody, a little phone call, a little whatever, um, that would make their day. Or a card or a letter to someone you may have been wondering about. What do you think the Lord wants you to be doing that you aren't? Think about it. This is summer almost, it's coming around the corner. What do you think God wants you to do? We don't take days off as Christians, right? We're 24 seven, 365. Uh, God wants to maybe use us. Could your prayer be the same prayer request that blind Bartimaeus had? Let me see. Give me a vision, Be thou my vision. Have you asked the Lord that? You know, really show me, Lord, what you want so that I can do it and fulfill your plan. Have you ever wondered why Jesus did the miraculous things he did in people's lives? What do you think the reason was? Was it just to impress those admiring or following him? To maybe draw them closer, maybe to have a relationship with him? Was it encouraging Mark to get to Jesus? And if you notice the, the illustration here, in fact, I'm going to use a, uh, another one about uh, the princess and the pea. How many remember that little story, that tale? Uh, Chris is going to come up and share us with the next 15 minutes that we have <laughs> that she did a drama. How many remember going to her drama back when she, was there a drama in high school? Yeah, a uh, band kind of remember, did you kind of band? How many went to that? How many cared back then? <laughs> okay, anyway, so, and, and uh, were you the princess? No. Oh, uh, okay. I'm not going to embarrass you, okay? I've already done it now. You've done it now, so thank you. But how many remember the story of the princess and the pea? How many don't? Okay. The princess and the pea. Let me just give you a little synopsis because it gets back to the people around Barnabas, around Barnabas. <laughs> And how eventually, in spite of the people around him, he came into a relationship and Jesus worked a miracle and changed his life and that impacted on his life and probably others. Well, the princess, as the story goes, I've got this long written out one. There was a prince who wanted to marry a prince. There was a prince that wanted to marry a princess. Only a real one would do. So he traveled through all the world to find her, and everywhere things went wrong. There were princesses of plenty. But how was he to know whether they were real princesses or not? There was something not quite right about most of them. So he came home again and was unhappy because he did not want to have, because he, did, he wanted so much to have a real princess. One evening a terrible storm blew up. It lightened and thundered and rained. It was really frightful. And in the midst of the storm came a knocking at the town gate. The old king went to open it. Who should be standing outside but a princess? And what a sight she was in all that rain and wind. Water streamed from her hair, down her clothes, in her shoes, ran out the heels. Yet she claimed to be a real princess. So they gave her a test. I'll sum it up. They gave her a test. And the test was that real princes would be sensitive. And the test was that they stacked 20 beds and then 20 more beds on top of a little pea 
and had her sleep on it that evening. And so the test was that because she was so sensitive, if she was a real princess, that something would disturb her sleep. And as the story goes, you know, it turned out that they asked her the next day, how was your night? And of course she said, it was terrible. It was miserable. It was painful. There was something in my bed that felt like rocks. And all those pads of beds were there, but she still felt that little pee. And the moral of the story was that a princess is sensitive to the needs of her people. And that kind of, that's a great paraphrase, okay? That, that gets back to our story with Blind Bartimaeus. Most of the people around weren't sensitive at all. Some of them said, sit down and be quiet. Don't bother the master. Some of them tried to dissuade him. Some of them tried to help him not find Jesus because he was blind. They could have led him a different way. But somebody must have helped him find Jesus or Jesus kept calling and he could hear Jesus' voice. So that gets, gets back to the point of what's that got to do with you and me? Story of uh, the scriptures with Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus. There's a beautiful worship song that was written a couple decades ago by Marie Barnett. It could have been composed by Desperate Bart. And here are some of the words. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living in me. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I am desperate for you. I'm lost without you. <clears throat> and some of you know that chorus, that song. That's how God wants you and me to be in our relationship. Bart was desperate. He didn't know what to do. He didn't, I don't think he really wanted to live his life blind the rest of the time begging. It wasn't being blind. It was his choice was to be a beggar in that society. There are lots of beggars out and about in our society. You know the kind of people I'm talking about. When we are that desperate, when we really want to see and have God be our vision, then the Lord comes to the broken and needy and blind and will, perhaps, ask us and them, what can I do for you? <coughs> blind Barb was that desperate that day and he called out to Jesus and recognized the Son of God when others really didn't recognize. They just saw a miracle possibility or miracle worker or maybe somebody that was going to take care of their lunch again because they had heard the stories. But Bart recognized the living Christ among them. It made a huge difference in his life and probably in others as he impacted in a different way. Well, I got some good news. We're going to change some place someday when I'm here for 50 years. We're going to put a scripture from Hebrews 13 8 that says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you're an adult here, I've got a pocket full of dollars. And if you can quote that when you leave here today, I'd be glad to give you one of those. Okay? Jesus Christ is the same. He healed back then, and he wants to do the same for you as he did for Bart. He wants to touch our lives in a special way, but we've got to be desperate for him. He is here in our presence today. How desperate are you? What you, uh, Pericles, a, a Greek uh, philosopher, said this, what you leave behind is not what is engraved on stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. So it's not the stuff. It's not the things. The rubbing sail every time reminds me not only of, you know, folks have extra stuff, but it just reminds me that, do I need all that extra stuff? And a lot of times we need to clean out the closets and maybe clean out the closets of our life, spiritually, and give it to the Lord. I don't think that Barton was set on the sidelines after his encounter with Jesus. In fact, the scriptures say that he followed down the path where Jesus was going. When we follow Jesus, he wants us to do what he's called us to do. I don't believe that Barnabas 
thought about how comfortable it was to be begging every day and no one could be expected. He had been doing it for all that time. He was comfortable with maybe begging. Maybe you're comfortable with where you are. But God always wants us to go another little step closer to him. I can't imagine that now seeing Bart would still be wondering where God was and hoping that he might have mercy on him. We that know that, know that he's merciful and cares. But there's folks out the door that maybe don't. God was his vision and he can be ours. His spiritual eyes were open and for side benefit, so were his physical eyes. Uh, Chilton was saying to me this week, because he had cataract surgery within the last little while, that he can see pretty well without his glasses. That's a good thing. You know, sometimes we take for granted things, or hearing, or whatever. Uh, God is able to do more than we can imagine or think. I do believe, though, that he got up, he being Bart, at Jesus' command began living the life that God, the Creator, asked him to live, and wanted him to live. That's what God wants to do with us, with you. So let me ask you, how sensitive are you to the voice of God? Are you so busy? Are you so occupied? Are you so impatient that you can't hear him? When the Lord leads you in the paths of righteousness, how do you perceive that back on that inside? God gives us a story, Barnabas, for a reason, to learn something. Hopefully today we can trust him and believe that he's going to do what he wants in our lives because we want him to be our vision. Let's pray. Lord, please uh, open our spiritual eyes that we might see. Like the title of that song that we sang just a, a few moments ago, Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of My Heart. Please do, for Jesus' sake. In his name I pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing hymn.
Okay? Thank you for being here, for your mom and for your dad, but thanks for coming. For all of you, you came for a reason, and uh, maybe you didn't know it, but hopefully today you will. But before you leave, shake somebody's hand and tell them that you are so glad that they came. Go and see that the Lord is good. May he direct your lives as a person in concert with his will. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.